Even though flashing a toilet might seem like a magic trick, as waste disappears right in front of your eyes. About 22 Wareham residents visit the bathroom daily, and that does not include the traffic from various businesses around town. With that said, have you ever wondered what happens to all that waste as soon as you flash? To save you a trip, I have visited just the facility that handles wastewater in town. Off the side of Sandwich Road, 6 Tony's Lane is the Wareham Water Pollution Control Facility. Here is where all the wastewater in Wareham ends up. Guy Campina, the director of the facility, will be our tour guide today. So what we have here is this is the influent coming into the treatment plant. We have three main pump stations out in town, one in Warham Center called the Narrows Pump Station. We have one in East Warham called the Depot Street Pump Station. And we have one in Onset, and that's called Heinz Field Pump Station. And so all the sewers collected from all the homes and businesses around those stations, and from there it's pumped directly to here. So you're seeing the flow come directly into the plant from those three main pump stations. So this is water in its rawest stage. This, this is, is not treated at all. Not treated at all. This is raw as it gets. This leaves your home and comes to here. It goes from here, comes over the wear, and down a trough right in the building. We have a meter there. That's a flow meter, a partial flume, and it tells us how much water we're getting every day. Do you have limitations to how many gallons this plant can handle, let's say, for you know, per day? This plant can handle 2 million gallons per day. However, the restrictive factor is because we have a permit that requires us to have low nitrogen, four pots per million, and low phosphorus, which is 0.2, I can only put in the river there, we can only put in 1.56 million gallons per day. That's limited by the flushing of the river, the Agawam River. It's, the, it, it's uh, what they call a flushing rate. And because it doesn't flush that well, we're limited what we can put in. So, when it leaves there, it comes into here. So this, I want to show you the building. There are three treatment stations. The first phase, also known as the primary phase, non-biodegradable materials are separated from the wastewater. Each day, about a bucket worth of these materials are pulled. This not only exhausts man labor, but is also detrimental to the machines. Each pump cannot handle these. So we're constantly out there taking the pumps out, taking the rags out, putting the pumps back online. And if we don't do that, and the pumps won't work, and then the level will rise in that wet well and back up into folks' basement. So people have to be dispatched immediately. And you're, you're used to all this smell. I, I see you're not having what any... smell? By the way, the room has quite the smell. There are vending machines that vacuum the order out and process it to mitigate the order before releasing it back into the atmosphere. And it, go, it comes out of these one, two, three, four biofilters, we call them. The biofilters go down about 16 feet. On the very bottom, you have a plenum that the air comes into, goes through some stone. Then it goes through a layer of wood chips, then into a biomedia, we call it, that's what bacteria is, because bacteria scavenges the sulfur products, which is your uh, hydrogen sulfide mercaptan, so the bacteria scavenges it. And then it goes through another layer of, of wood chips, and then up into the atmosphere. It's quite a system, it's quite a system. So what stage is this water on? So this is the anoxic stage, we call it. It's the, technically the very first treatment other than the preliminary we saw but this is the first stage of treatment so because this is a biological nutrient removal plant our goal is to get rid of nitrogen because nitrogen in the water as we talked about earlier it creates a lot of growth and then the plants grow like crazy then it means they suck up a lot of dissolved oxygen if they suck up the dissolved oxygen the fish have less to get so the fish are suffering then you have fish killing different things and then you have grass and, 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 and algae and things just growing like crazy it just crowds everything out so it's not a good thing so we're taking off the nutrients. Yes. Basins, they're about 16 feet deep. And, and I always say this is, you know, the heart of everything, this is where it begins. So in here, we just, it came from this area here. It mm. comes in, now remember there's no oxygen there, 0.5 milligrams per liter. Here we keep it two milligrams per liter. So now we're giving a lot of free oxygen. Flowed in here was all the organic matter that we get off the streets that comes from the pump stations. Mm -hmm. So now we want the bacteria to start doing their thing. So these are what they call carbonaceous 
and they start eating all the carbon sources and they start eating it and eating and enjoy it. And that begins to break down the biological process. And then their byproduct is ammonia. Mm -hmm. And then there's another biological process, change ammonia to nitrate, bacteria does this. So we've got um, nitrifiers, and then we have uh, denitrifiers, um, and then you have the carbonaceous bacteria. So each bacteria has their specialty. So we look at the mixed liquor. It's called a mixed liquor. And so in that mixed liquor, we try to keep a right around 4,000 milligrams per liter of mass of bacteria. So when you take a jar, and you look in there, you'll see all this mass of bacteria, and that's what keeps this place going. So um, we want to maintain a certain amount, depending on the food coming in. So the lab balances food to mass. How much bacteria do I have and how much food's coming in? Because that changes on an hourly basis. So they do their testing. And it's okay, what's the, and then he adjusts it by wasting bacteria or, or the mixed liquor or sending some back. It's constantly recycling. And then when he doesn't eat, he throws away because he wants to maintain that balance between bacteria and between uh, food coming in. So I am, what I'm hearing is that all different departments of, the, of this plant depend or could depend on one another to make sure that we get the product that we want. But would you point to a specific part in this whole plant that you'd say this is the crucial part? If this breaks, it, <sighs> we are in deep trouble. Well, there's a lot, I, and that's a good question because I try to prioritize and I always ask myself, if something were to fail, what's the consequence? And so we do that all the time. Um, it's like if I asked you what part of your body do you want to get rid of, you'd say none of it. Mm -hmm. Well, one's going to be more important. Is your eyes more important than your mouth or your ears? Which one's more important? It's a very difficult question to answer. And you could probably come to an answer, it, it, you know, philosophically really rationalize it. For us, it's the biological process. And so we have pumps downstairs in the bottom of that building that move all this water in a big circle. If those pumps go down, we have no movement. Although we have in that building also upstairs, we have aer aerators, big, big blowers that make a lot of air. Mm. Without air, then that process can't work. So they both have equally importance. I can't do without either one of them. There's no way I can do it with either one of them. So that would probably be the top priority is the air to keep the system going. To keep, without air, the bugs all die. Without the bugs, I have no treatment. So this is what we call the secondary treatment. We're into secondary treatment. And this is called the extended aeration. Because we, we talked earlier, really, we keep recycling and we aerate it so it's extended period of time, 10 days. And they can eat a little less, a little more, depending on the time of the year. As it gets warmer, it's harder to get DO, saturated because heat, it's a chemistry thing, heat and water. So drawers may keep it a little bit longer. So he has to figure that out. Again, it's, it's a daily sliding thing. Every day, the testing will lab. George gets in here at 7.30 in the morning and, and when he leaves at 4, it's non-stop because he's got to constantly make sure that this system is working properly. And so then each one, this is clarifier 3, clarifier 2, clarifier 1, and in these we're adding PAC, polyaluminum chloride, and that's to drop out the phosphorus. Remember we had a phosphorus made of 0.2, so we have to drop out the phosphorus. And so we use a chemical, it's chemically taken out, by pack, polyaluminum chloride, and that's dropping into the water. Constantly drip, constant drip, constant drip. It mixed with the water. It goes into here, drops out the, the uh, in the bottom of these clarifies, it drops it out. The color has changed a lot. You can see a lot, you can now see, you can see it's starting to lighten up a little bit. When I show you the water coming over the wear, is you can see it's almost clear. If you look in those V's, yeah. it's almost clear. And this is the sand filter. So it comes into each filter. We have three of them, and the water comes over, and then it goes down. There's a, a layer, I think it's about three feet of rock, it's silica. And actually rocks, they sit together, and the water trickles through it. And in the middle here is a biomass, and it's bacteria again. Mm -hmm. And these bacteria are facultative, so they're chasing the element, the nitrogen. Ship off the nitrogen, and then it traps, the nitrogen traps, and then this unit will come on every three hours, do a little bump, release the nitrogen, it goes into the atmosphere. This is the policy. The plant receives an average of 9,000 gallons per day. But what happens when the plant gets overwhelmed? Yeah, so what happens is when the plant slows down, when there's no flow, the pumps downstairs bring this back into the plant. We used to keep these half full, and it was, they were very odorous. We had the air going, so we've yeah. shut the air off. We empty these every day and clean them. The plant runs 24 hours every day with the help of this mega computer that controls the entire operation. 
wastewater spends about 8 to 11 days in this plant before being released. And it is hard to believe that this water, it's this end product. And one of the things he was proud of before he 